I've been thinking about home defense for a little while now, and recently I've become more obsessed with looking up different uh, videos on YouTube on how to build weapons and armor. I keep uh, coming up with different ideas, and I keep stumbling over this guy. So I thought I'd finally get around to just taking care of it. Uh, a lot of it is stuff that I'm brand new on, and I have no idea what I'm doing. However, I feel like I'm avoiding it, and I might as well just get to it and get some uh, momentum going. I thought I would take some advice from Eli over at ZNA Productions and make a small-scale replica of what I'm planning on doing. I ended up doing that last night, and this is what I came up with. As you can see, it's a very small, scaled-down version of my uh, little bullpup crossbow, and it is designed to shoot matchsticks. Now, assembling this was a little bit of a tedious process, but at the same time, I think it really did help uncover a number of issues that would have been an even bigger challenge uh, running into full scale. I did also uh, get a little bit of encouragement because I know that a basic proof of concept of this works. I can disengage this rubber band. It will then push this matchstick forward and then fly off out into wherever. The way this works is it's a variant of a uh, typical crossbow, however it doesn't have any sort of uh, parallel, or excuse me, it doesn't have any sort of perpendicular arms to it. So where a t traditional crossbow might have these limbs that come out and your strings would be coming off of these, I'm working off something of a, uh, a pulley system where ideally I would have my bow string coming back, being pulled forward, around a pulley, and then back towards the uh, shoulder stock where it would have my main spring or uh, tension thing. I have not yet figured out any sort of trigger mechanism, so I'm really just disengaging this rubber band with my thumb. I just push it up on both sides and there you go. So if I wanted to recock this, restring it, uh, whatever your correct terminology is. I would take my elastic band, pull around my reflecting rod, and then pull it back. So it fits under here, under this retaining clip. And then right there in this little notch. So it is now strung. I can then place my bolt or my matchstick in this case, into the slot, and I am now ready to fire. I didn't really have anything in terms of small replica 2x4s, so what I did was I started off with a larger chunk of wood. I then took a slice off of it, which you see right here. I then snapped that in half, and then pinned them together. This was also a, a little bit of an experimental learning setup because these were terribly wobbly and bendy before I put this uh, diagonal screw in. It's a lot more stable, but it causes issues in a couple of other ways, such as alignment and uh, rotation and just uh, overall wonkiness. Going off some rough estimates, uh, I'm looking at a one-fourth or one-fifth scale and this was a little bit encouraging. Last night I tried some test shots, and it did manage to go from here to about that uh, bedroom doorway, which in real life is eight feet, so if we are being true to uh, replica scales, then I'm looking at a possible range of 32 to 40 feet. And that's not bad for a, a homebrew crossbow. Now to be realistic, I did find a number of issues with it as well, which I suppose was really the whole reason for the uh, prototype. For instance, I tried firing a matchstick from about this point into uh, my living room. I did launch the matchstick. Once it got to about that doorway, it started curving and then got lost somewhere and I have not found it since. That's uh, not something I want to happen in full scale. 
So I'm going to have to look into a, a number of different principles and do some troubleshooting uh, to make sure that I want things to happen the way they are intended to and not accidentally or whatever. I think one of the most obvious points that I've learned so far is this idea of center of gravity and stable versus unstable flights. You know, as you probably know from basic physics, things have a point somewhere in the middle where all the weight is modeled, I guess for lack of a better word. You can see I've drawn that with a little bit of pencil mark on this stick. And if I were to hold it there, I can balance it. More or less. Now that's, uh, that's all well and good if it's a stationary object, but if I'm trying to move it, then it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. Especially when I'm trying to push it from behind the center of gravity. Because if I push it in the wrong location, I end up getting different you know, rotations and movements that I was not expecting. And in the case of archery and crossbows, I want my arrow or my rod shaft to go straight and not do backflips. For another example, anytime a rocket explodes, it sometimes does a somersault and that's typically not what you want your rockets to do. However, that's operating off the same principle of an arrow, except rockets are being shot upwards instead of sideways. Now aside from all the uh, the small imprecisions and the cobbled together nature of my model, I noticed that one thing I did have issues was with alignment and really making sure I get my force of pushing right behind that center of gravity of my matchstick. I think that's going to make one of the biggest uh, differences in terms of how well my projectile launcher launches regardless of whatever sort of clever or ridiculous trigger machine features that it has on it. So with that being said, I thought I would take some time, step back, and look at all these different concepts one by one. And when I say that, I think I'm going to start by just making a simple bow and arrow. Now in terms of a uh, bow, I'm thinking of having just kind of like a, a basic frame along with some sort of elastic thing to act as my source of push. Here I have some bungee cords that I found and I was originally planning on using for my crossbow. However, I don't know if these are necessarily going to be the right size. So instead I was leaning more towards these springs that I pulled off of a dishwasher door. I've got two of these and I was gonna do one on either side. But for a bow and arrow, I think these might come in very useful. Now what I was going to do is have some kind of... Actually, you know what, let me uh, lay out some pieces and I can just kind of show you from there. Okay, here's my basic setup. Uh, I've got a piece of wood over here that's going to act as my main uh, grip or arm, whatever. And that's also where I'm going to be not, um, resting my arrow. We come to either side, we've got these uh, shelf hanger braces, and if you notice, they have these little hooks where you would usually rest a, a wooden dowel in, as you can see there. Instead, what I'm going to do is take these uh, bungee cords, kind of wrap them around these hooks, so it's kind of like a little bit of a recurve bow, and in the middle, I'm going to join them with this braided cable from an old, worn out bicycle lock. Now when this is all put together, I can start finding some relatively straight pieces of wood or whatever, or fiberglass. Uh, add a little bit of a notch in one end, add a pointy end to the other, maybe put on some fletchings or something. And then I've got some kind of crude bow. It's been maybe three minutes and I've used no screws or power tools, and yet I'm already liking how this is turning out. I did have some concerns about uh, these bungee cords being a little bit too long. As you can see, they're uh, definitely gonna overlap. However, after doing some thought, 
I think I might be able to just uh, kind of fold these in half. Get a little bit more um, tension strength out of them. And at the same time, cut down the length. And then I can actually have some room in the middle for some knocking size uh, bow string. Now, of course, this is not really string. This is braided cable. But I kind of want to use this just for extra ingenuity points. I had some concerns about this bow snapping right in the middle. If uh, there was too much tension pulling these two hooks together, I was thinking that it might just end up snapping in half kind of towards me. So instead, what I did was I took that uh, metal cable, I then wrapped it around the outside through the front of the bow, and then around to the back side. And that was done to provide some, as kind of counter pulling. So that way there's kind of a, a fixed length going around the perimeter circumference of the bow itself. So that way, if I were to pull on the string to some extent, I would have this rigid cable being fixed somehow, and it would not be able to allow these um, these outside edges to pull anymore. Now, this uh, still might snap in the middle, so what I was planning on doing was adding some additional reinforcement either with a nice heavy iron bar or maybe some kind of plate of steel or something I haven't really decided um, but uh, I'll just play with some ideas well I got some bad news I went through all my hardware and it doesn't look like I've got the right bolts to go through these holes to attach this piece of uh, iron to bridge the gap between these opposing hooks and therefore keep my entire bow from snapping right in the middle. That kind of stinks. With the way things were going, I probably could have just made the entire thing out of metal. I can do that. I got this uh, large piece of rebar. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see right here, but my best guess is it's maybe four feet or so. I have a tape measure. It's right around four feet, not counting that little shepherd's hook at the end. So I think I might be able to use this. My first idea is to round out that little hook at the end. I'll turn this into a long straight piece of iron, and then I'll start putting some curve into it and hopefully turn it into some kind of recurve bow shape. I'm gonna go find a sledgehammer. Well, that didn't work. I did find a sledgehammer. But uh, unfortunately, I learned that uh, rebar is pretty hard to bend. I can't even tell if it uh, really bent at all. It definitely didn't bend in the spot I was hoping it for it to. Well, that being said, rebar makes a pretty terrible bow if you don't have the means to work it. Although it does make a pretty efficient pry bar. I was able to lift one of those uh, little parking blocks with myself on it, no problem. Okay, plan C. Uh, I got some PVC over there. I've seen people make bows with those. Let's give that a try. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. Uh, rough estimate, I'd say this is about uh, four and a half feet long of one inch PVC pipe. I couldn't tell you the scheduling on it, but uh, it's the only thing I've got, so I'm just going to try and make it work. It's got a couple little chunks missing out of the ends of it. I already went ahead and cut off a lot of the pointy bits with some wire cutters. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and start filing this down, uh, looking for something I can put inside of this for uh, extra strength. And then I'll go ahead and find some cord and lash it up. All right, I've got my five foot something slice of PVC pipe. I took some files to it, drove some of these little notches into it. And as you can see, I cut them with a slight bit of a curve to them. This is hopefully going to allow me to 
give me some place to have the uh, the rope sit whenever I strain this. I've notched this bow on both sides. I'm going to try to find something I can put in the middle of it to hopefully give it some kind of extra rigidity. And then I'm going to go find some rope, string it up, and we'll see what I got there. Oh, and then I'll probably make some arrows or something too. Here's what I've been doing for the last little while. I didn't have any sort of fiberglass springs or anything uh, elastic-y, like more rubber band. I had this silicone tube, but that just barely wouldn't fit. So I decided to go the, uh, the springing route since I had a bunch of uh, metal stuff. I took all these little metal rods, kind of guesstimated where their midpoint was based on their center of gravity. I drew a line with a, a little bit of Sharpie marker, and now I'm going to tape all these up, insert them about midway into the tube, and then hopefully my main bow should be ready for stringing. I bundled up my metal and uh, garden tubing and decided to stuff it down the barrel with a little bit of a fiberglass rod that I had. It seemed like it fit in there pretty snugly, and I pushed it down to, I want to say, maybe at least that far. Unfortunately, it wasn't far enough, because when I tried to test the uh, the draw weight, it uh, pretty much just kind of folded in half. I don't think bows are supposed to do that. Yeah, this is uh, supposed to be more of a, a gentle curve rather than a sharp bend. It's not really what I was going for. Oh well. Here's kind of what I was going for, except it didn't really turn out. But it's not a total loss. I did learn some things and have some ideas of what to do better next time. Uh, for starters, I would try to figure out some kind of filling. Well, first off, probably get some better PVC, but this is really just the best that I found. But I would also try to get some better filling so that way I don't have any sort of weak points like you see right here, and I don't have any sort of folding in my pipe. For a second point, I would cut these notches a little bit deeper, if not drill it a hole right through the uh, this wall of the pipe completely, just so that way I can get my, uh, my bowstring to actually seat. Because at the uh, angle of attaching that it's on right now, it just flips off quite easily. There's not enough depth to that groove right there. So once it pulls, it just kind of slips off. And I got the same thing going on down there. If I were to get both of these correct, I think I would probably be able to attach some kind of handle right there in the midpoint and uh, then attach some kind of, uh, I guess, like knocking bead or something for my arrows. Which overall, I guess I'm not terribly disappointed that this didn't work out. I mean, I wouldn't have any, I would not have had any sort of means to test it because I've never needed arrows before. I don't know, maybe this one in the future will work out. And then uh, I might have some arrows to go along with it. I'll keep everyone updated.